Thank you very much for your contribution today. Also, we are happy to see you on, on screen. And uh, I hope you are well also. There is, I think, two or three time difference between Turkey and India. Yes. Well, all right. OK. Uh, although you have entered the summer period, uh, but the weather is uh, in Eskishir still warm and rainy, uh, please send some hot air from your country, uh, but not more than 30 yeah. centigrade degrees. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Otherwise, it's so, so much for us. Uh, as you know, dear friends, Metaverse has been a very, po very popular issue uh, since Zuckerberg's announcement in October uh, 2021. From the entertainment industry to education, many presentations were made and articles and books were published. I don't think such a popular topic has been discussed until now. As my opinion, the main reason why it is a popular topic uh, is that it is based on virtual reality. Uh, another aspect that uh, it moves us into the internet instead of being on, on the internet in the future. In fact, science fiction novels and science fiction movies have been preparing us for the metaverse for years. Uh, but mostly we read these novels and watch movies for entertainment purposes. Uh, you must not forget that science fiction. Sorry, uh, Professor Kesim. Yeah. Professor Kesim. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, His audio is coming well. Is there any problem? Is there any issue? I can hear very well. Uh, and I think a microphone is open. Uh, Ramesh, could you please uh, turn off your microphone? There, uh, there is an echo. There is an echo. Okay. Uh, now, uh, sorry, uh, and you can continue, please. Uh, which steps? You know, at the beginning or now? Uh, from last one. <laughs> uh, you, Nereden başlayayım? Baştan mı yoksa sondan mı? Nasıl oldu? Anlamadım. E, i̇lerleyebilirsiniz hocam. Okay. E, in fact, science fiction novels and science fiction movies have been preparing us for the metaverse for years, but mostly we read these novels and watch movies for entertainment purposes. We must not forget that science fiction gives us the latest information about the future. For this reason, science fiction has to be an integral part of our education system. Okay, now uh, I leave screen to the make uh, uh, your valuable speech, uh, Mr. Sharma, please. Okay, thank you, uh, Professor Kesim. And I will share my screen. Uh, Okay, my purpose is that uh, in addition to my uh, presentation, I'll demonstrate two of the important uh, platforms. One is this Metaverse software, and I will request uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Serap or Dr. Serpil, because they, if, if anybody who is using computer to log in at that time so that we can see that how Metaverse is, one is this software and another is this one, which is uh, very important uh, uh, and easy to use it. But first of all, let us see, uh, go ahead with our presentation. So the title is that we want to see that what are the promises, fears and hitchhiking the education, uh, which have been uh, arisen uh, due to the emergence of metaverse. But before that, I wish to congratulate all of you, in fact, including me, because I consider me as a part of Anadolu University. I have uh, uh, many of you as my great friends uh, from Anadolu University in Turkey. So congratulations to all of us for the four, uh, 40th anniversary of the open education system uh, at Anadolu University. In fact, like when I was director of Indira Gandhi National Open University, Anadolu University also is famous as one of the mega open university of the world. 
So really, this is a very high achievement of the university that uh, such a big reputation has been achieved over four decades uh, of open education system. The quality of research which is coming out, the quality of faculty, it is really worth appreciating from there. So about uh, metaverse, uh, some people get confused because those of you who are not aware about the background history of it, they think that it is jo uh, uh, Zuckerberg, Mark Zuckerberg, the founder of Facebook, that since he announced that he is going to change the name of his company from Facebook to Meta and those things. So it, the, in the first instance where uh, we have found the uh, mention of Metaverse was in this novel, Snow Crash, which was written by Neil Stephenson uh, in 1992. And there, if you see on the screen here, he is uh, thinking of some sort of a parallel universe in which the hero uh, is uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 transporting uh, uh, himself from there. And if we see the kind of emergence which has over, say, like simple kind of games like Mario, we have played uh, from the simple Nintendo kind of, uh, um, uh, you know, gadgets up to the tablet and other devices. And not only that, if we see the, uh, the, the transgression of the kind of graphic capability increasing, these two games which have been very, very popular, one is Doom. So the, on the top, you see the initial version of that which came in 1993 and the kind of graphics in the version uh, uh, 2020 for that. And similarly, Tom Raider. Uh, so the uh, initially, so you can make out that the software is taking us more towards the reality side. The graphics, the power, they, it has increased and that has arisen due to uh, sophisticated uh, software as well as the high uh, kind of graphic capability of the hardware and uh, those uh, uh, means uh, within and particularly the emergence of internet. We will see that how internet has impacted into it. But first of all, let us think, I ponder about it, that how many kind of worlds do we live in? And uh, means we, there is one real world and then the, we, we, think, we think that it is a virtual world. This is a research by uh, Dr. Kish, in which uh, uh, she uh, proposed that there are three kinds of worlds in which we live, the real world as such our physical world, and then the digital world, the kind of 2D web or uh, uh, internet and the virtual world, which is more popularly after the emergence of blockchain, we are calling it as web three uh, and those kind of the, the capabilities it has. Uh, so what we see is the emergence of uh, certain kind of uh, other universes and that has been made possible, popular and possible with this one world of the Warcraft online game. So it is a massively multiplayer online role playing game. Much of the research has been done on that. And then we had uh, Intraverses, which is basically a corporate kind of a virtual world. And then the uh, one of the beautiful example of paraverse like Google Earth. So, you know, we can teleport to any part of the world using Google Earth. We can see the places uh, uh, from there. So, and similarly, metaverse, which is primarily instituted as a, a kind of a gaming platform, but nowadays it is being uh, used for almost all kind of activities which we do. So the question arises that what is a virtual world? Basically, it, this, uh, the virtual world, when we say that it is a computer-based uh, uh, system generation, and uh, uh, here we, in the role of avatar as a 3D virtual environment, we take part into it and communicate like we have been participating in the uh, real life with that. So that uh, uh, goes into there. There are some examples of that, like this is Chilgo headquarters. It is a space where every year, and I invite you next year uh, to participate in this. This is, uh, uh, we conduct it in Second Life 
all the presentations are made there. This is me in the center sitting on the chair and uh, on the right, you can see in the corner on the wall, there are other participants display where the presentations, et cetera, they are shared. This is another application, Verbella. And uh, here also, uh, you know, we can create our ID and an avatar, and then we can visit places, institutions, et cetera, that can go uh, something like that. So uh, these virtual worlds, they are very helpful to us in establishing social learning, has its pedagogical implications, enhances the social networking. These are the live images which we have taken from our work uh, uh, we have been uh, doing uh, for that. And this is our association, the Virtual World Education Asia, in which we have uh, our contributors from various countries, like you see, uh, from Indonesia, we have from America, from Japan, the Hajime on the, on the uh, left most is from uh, Japan. So these are our avatars uh, into it. So, and th all these things, they have been made possible due to the uh, emergence of, uh, sorry, various, various softwares and various platforms. And particularly, they, uh, we can divide them into Ethereum-based and non-Ethereum based. So like Sandbox is there, Nemesis is there, uh, Pantherium is there, Musicverse is there, Genesis is there. We will see the example of uh, uh, a special uh, platform and like that. So these things, they have you know, uh, uh, changed the scenario to a much bigger way from that. And this has become made possible that from the text-based MUD, we, the MUD we call them as the multi-user dungeon to the fully graphical uh, uh, massive locales where the participants, they keep on interacting with each other. And not only that, even the traditional kind of games, they have, they have gone blockchain-based games uh, from there. So let us see some of the uh, examples that uh, which allow us uh, and as a metaverse uh, there, Second Life has been one of the most popular. Uh, this was created by Linden Labs in 2003. And after uh, uh, staying into the market, into the uh, portfolio, then somehow the popularity decreased and people forgot about it. But just for the past few years, the people, the, uh, uh, the uh, develop, means the creator of this, they have revived it with some new functionalities and it is coming up very, uh, uh, means becoming popular again. This is Active Worlds. This is uh, uh, Online Worlds, or in short, we call them as Onwards. Uh, this is for dating and social networking among themselves, uh, like Twinity. This is Small Worlds for kids. Kaneva is uh, created by a company based in Georgia, United States uh, by Kloss and Frame. Uh, this is open source example of uh, uh, this open sim. In short, we call it as open sim, the open simulator, uh, which is open source. Uh, so that can be tried uh, as, a, uh, as an example of if we want to establish a metaverse for our own system for there. So let's have a quick overview that how from the uh, normal web one uh, 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 and then we have come uh, now to three-dimensional uh, 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 situations from there. Initially, uh, uh, in the earlier beginning, when there were monochrome computers, so it was mostly the text-based thing. So uh, as you can see that around 1978, MUD, multi-user dungeons, the normal kind of plain kind of games they were uh, uh, created. But then as the technology progressed, the important uh, machines, I mean, the institutions also, they started uh, uh, coming on board, like NASA had its presence uh, in the virtual environment in 1985, and the simulators and other things, they uh, uh, came up. And it was uh, in the early 90s that uh, the World Wide Web was uh, invented by some Tim Berners-Lee, and it was uh, Joran Lanier, uh, of VPL in 1986, who create who coined this term virtual reality. So there, from there, these things they there. He is Sir Tim Berners Lee, and uh, we are thankful to him that uh, he never patented World Wide Web. Otherwise, we would have been paying it. It would have become a commercial uh, activity. And very recently, just I think a few weeks ago, 
in one of his interviews, he has expressed his opinion about the so-called Web3 and the, the people when they talk about the transparency of the web when talking about the blockchain and other things also. So he is trying to protect that what was created for the common people, how they can take keep control of that. The major changes came uh, when this movie was released in 1999 about Matrix. And so far, you have you must have seen the three instances. And very recently, uh, just uh, the fourth installment has also been released of the Matrix. But somehow, uh, people have not been so much enthusiastic about it. They, in a way, the reviews are disappointing about the fourth. But the point here is that uh, they that was the movie which promoted the kind of uh, the, the other kind of world or the parallel worlds, the metaverse, etc. in that, that how the things they can be in the future. And then came Second Life, which was uh, uh, means, uh, created by uh, Linden, by Linden Labs as a Linden world. And then uh, things were uh, uh, getting changed. Now they, they, they called it as residents who were the users uh, having some avatar from there and then doing all kinds of activities which the people they do in real life. So that was uh, a game changer when uh, uh, we were introduced to the world of Warcraft which came in and it was the hugely popular massively multiplayer online role playing game and still it is one of the dominating uh, thing around the world. So. Uh, we know about this uh, 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 Horizon report. Um, uh, I was also an expert in in, uh, in this from uh, in, from India, representing uh, this part of the world. And now, uh, for the past two three years, our good friend Dr. Aras Bojkut, he is uh, uh, contributing to the uh, Horizon report. Initially, it was published by New Media Consortium, but now Educause has taken it back. And in uh, uh, this report is very important for education technologists and educationists as such. They try to identify the six kind of emerging technologies which will impact higher education. Although they, they, they analyze library, impact on library, impact on K-12 sector, et cetera, those things are also there. The recent report has highlighted that the extended reality technologies, which is a mix of augmented reality, virtual reality, uh, mixed reality, and haptic technologies, et cetera, they are you know, going to be uh, uh, in integrated into the educational field to a very uh, larger scale from there. So this is the virtual world uh, education round table meeting, which is held every year and people gather into it and discuss about the uh, topics of interest. Uh, it in, it, uh, this is another live screenshot of our work uh, from Indonesia uh, as a means of uh, enhancing social learning. So at the back, you see the author is describing the books uh, implemented there. Then this is the Natural History Museum of Vienna uh, on uh, giving information to the students about the prehistoric uh, uh, species. Uh, this I am a part of this project, Sao Yau, uh, Yau da Bahia Theater, which was uh, which is in Bahia Salvador, and uh, this theater existed. You see in the upper side the real photograph of that theater, which got burned down somewhere 200 years ago, and physically doesn't exist anymore. But then we created a virtual museum application of it. And that is the entry on Wikipedia uh, also about it. So now the people, they can visit it and then they can experience the kind of cultural activities through this. You see these blue color arrows that how the uh, cultural activities they were being performed at that time. So the students, they can understand uh, about carbon dating. Teachers, they can teleport them to any place uh, 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 within few seconds. And this became so much popular now, uh, uh, these kind of virtual worlds that uh, many important organizations like this United States National Oceano, Oceanic and Atmospheric NUA, uh, they have their uh, presence on virtual world. This is to carry out oceanographic studies. Uh, you study science, uh, uh, like this is in the University of Leicester in United Kingdom. 
and the activity it's a complete set of around three hours where the people the students they carry out those uh, uh, experiments which are expensive difficult to carry out in real life so that is there this is another virtual genealogical society to talk about dna and uh, not only that students can create interactive books also using these platforms or from there uh, and uh, uh, we have examples from the field of literature as well. Uh, so, uh, means uh, here you can read the details about it. Uh, this is the page from Stanford University. Uh, this is University of the West of England. This is the uh, Isles of Kenya. Just a minute. There is this. Uh, so let me shift it somewhere here. And then Bunny Isles for uh, Kenya. Then this is Indiana University Second Life Campus. This is Virtual University of Edinburgh. Uh, this is University of Delaware. Then NASA in Second Life. So you see the acceptance and the real use by so many institutions which are famous for that. And this is a research by Samson uh, where they conducted the research and found that the, these kind of uh, uh, virtual worlds, they are very good, uh, certain successful case studies, like replicating the real life scenarios that are difficult to conduct in real life. So like managing incidents, accident in, uh, investigation, or the uh, court based scenarios for law students that is there, then if we have such, something which involves procedural learning into it. Uh, so practicing methodology, particularly like for health sciences uh, uh, topics uh, there. And not only that, exploring the digital identity, it helps uh, uh, quite a lot in that for the uh, uh, students uh, there. So this kind of scenarios, they are created uh, into it. This is a study by uh, Loyalist uh, uh, College. And this is quite interesting study that uh, about the border security force, uh, means the real guards uh, patrolling on the US Canadian border. Uh, the training was given to them and they found that they were able to develop critical skills using these kind of metaverses, the, the kind of virtual worlds uh, uh, from there. And then, then uh, everybody knows about uh, uh, Dr. Tony Bates, uh, one of the prominent educational uh, technology uh, experts and he regularly writes uh, uh, on his website about the matters pertaining to education technology. And uh, in one of his writings, he stressed that these have been very, very successful in education because the students identify with the character and the situations and they become active participant of the events on the screen. And the learning from these experiences, it is integrated into the real life applications. So that's a, 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 a you know a, 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 an interesting thing, and similarly, the when the study was conducted at Loyalist uh, uh, College, the students reported that these kind of experiences they it enhanced the learning of the content, they developed more confidence, their observational skills they were increased, and the 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 their competence to re respond to a critical situation was much more improved from there. So, and there's there. Then there are some other researches and uh, I hope that if we have some research students participating in this event now, you can have some uh, research uh, idea uh, from here, like uh, uh, Dr. Rudman uh, found that these, there are these four areas where these virtual worlds, they can be of very much value in teaching and learning, uh, like investigating the learning from field trips, mediated uh, environments, interaction with that uh, content, uh, um, the peer interaction, something, or uh, maintaining anonymity. Uh, because you can uh, uh, assume any avatar and can hide your real identity. And the people, they feel uh, relaxed in communicating with them. But then it is not that everything works in these uh, metaverses or in uh, uh, virtual worlds. There are few things which doesn't work. Uh, like the, the, these kind of virtual chalk and talk, uh, uh, not able to replace because it's merely that lecture for the students at a distance. So these kind of immersions, they do not add further value 
beyond making it as a more accessible technology. Uh, so that has been found by uh, Claire Simpson. And then uh, it becomes a little challenging when we have unplanned open-ended activities. Like there is one, this uh, the, the reflection by a student who says that I just went into second life, wandered around here, there, and I did not know what to do there. And the, the, the clarity was not there. But maybe the, 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 that can be a reason for a poor instructional design or the learning design or the learning scenario which was created uh, uh, by the uh, teacher into that. So Mark Childs identified the pedagogical approaches which can be researched by our research scholars here, like uh, uh, associative pedagogy, which is for transmitting information uh, using these medium, then uh, problem solving skills as a cognitive development, then forming ideas through discussion, which is a type of social constructivism and connectivism, like the emerging of the interaction between uh, uh, various uh, peer uh, group and group. So the most successful case studies which fit into this cognitive or social constructive, and therefore we are able to use well-defined context or situations for that. And that's why these game-based scenarios, because the game-based learning is, uh, uh, you know, even uh, very recently, the government of India uh, has uh, approved the national education policy. And in that, the government of India has also recommended a heavy use of game-based learning uh, 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 to enhance the learning attainment of the students. So you can see, and now there are certain recent developments uh, 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 in this field, uh, like uh, the Second Life creator, they have used now blockchain technology to enhance the VR gaming experience. Uh, they are coming up with sensors, body motions, 3D audio like that to give a real kind of immersive uh, feeling to the users into that. This is another popular Decentraland. Uh, we can visit the website and can create uh, uh, our own uh, means island or, or the space in there. Uh, there. So we can create, we can explore, and we can have create in that Decentraland it, 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 it is one of the prominent platforms. Then we have uh, crypto voxels, um, where it, this is based on Ethereum blockchain. So users can buy land, build stores, art galleries, the, the, uh, do, with the help of various editing tools. Uh, we have templates for avatars and voice chats, etc., for communication purposes. Then this is a uh, Somnium space. Uh, again, an another platform for metaverse, uh, uh, where we can create our uh, scenarios. The Facebook also announced that Facebook Horizon is coming up and uh, uh, where you can uh, work as a, a team player into it. Uh, there is an interesting thing which you note uh, in these experiments in that in some of the virtual worlds, the, uh, the people, the residents, you will see them in full body. But in some of them, you will see only the upper thorax up like in the second photograph here. So this is quite interesting uh, uh, a technological reason behind that. There's a, if this is there, uh, what happens that when you use, and this, the metaverse experiences, they have to be, uh, for that we need uh, head-mounted devices, HMD. And they say that there are two factors. For uh, picking up something, we need certain controllers. So we have hand sensors with us, but at present there are no leg sensors which we can put on our legs. And if we bend to see our legs, then the distortion may be difficult. So that's why these platforms, if they if they show only the thorax up, uh, the human body in which the lower body is missing, that is the reason that uh, the, the, the sensors, they are yet to be developed. Because if you are walking, then that can disorient the, so that's why. Not only that, even the concerts, uh, they are, uh, uh, you know, they say that the future of concert is also virtual. And uh, uh, very recently, there is a festival uh, of color in India. And uh, many people, they celebrated the festival of colors fully 
in the virtual world from there. So these are also uh, on the rise from there. Uh, the uh, educational conventions, they are being uh, uh, managed in virtual uh, reality platforms. And this is social VR company. They are planning to bring out their own currency, virtual DLP currency. It is different from those kind of cryptocurrency. It is, it is a type short of that, uh, 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 where the people, they can use them uh, for use. Uh, this is uh, uh, a quick demonstration of Verbella. I'll just show you uh, a very quick demonstration of that. So you, you, you create your avatar and then uh, you, know, you walk around the uh, spaces. You can go into a meeting hall where you will meet different people. You can talk to them. You can share your content, share your material. And uh, there are objects which we can use. You can, uh, you know, them and work accordingly on them. So this is uh, Verbella. And then the, this brings us to the a glimpse into the future of work as metaverse. Now, the metaverse is already here using this uh, virtual uh, 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 reality, virtual world uh, platforms with us, like Minecraft, which has been a very popular game for that. And it has millions and billions of users uh, and a very big economy because a lot of things are there. But then there are two things. This is another uh, a platform, Second Life. And uh, let me show it to you. You can you know fly, you can walk, you can run. And there are many uh, things. You can create your islands where we project, we share our things. So I think, uh, oh, there is why sir, perhaps uh, you may not hear because I, perhaps I did not click. Anyway, uh, and then my audio is not okay. Uh, so here, uh, this is the uh, thing in which, uh, you know, let me just little fast forward it. This is uh, uh, music uh, coming from the background. So you go and uh, hear the cultural aspect. So this brings us to Metaverse. And Tim Sweeney, the CEO of Epic Games, defines that a Metaverse can be defined as a real-time 3D social medium where we can create and engage in shared experiences as equal participant in an economy with social impact. That is there. So the, the, the change is from Web2, which is a stage of read-write web, uh, in which Wikipedia came, and the social media emerged to shifting to the web three stage now, which is decentralized, interconnected, blockchain enabled, and other things uh, which are uh, going uh, uh, using into that. So it has brought a shift. Shift means that now from the role of storytelling, we are story making. From the role of spokespeople, we have become virtual human now. From going to consumer, now we are talking to avatar from there. So these kind of things, they have you know, made the shift uh, from there. And then what it brings to us that with the help of avatar, based on our online identity, our interest, our habits. So these have become our user ID. Uh, like I am RCS Darwin. So half of the name I select, half of the name software gives me. So Darwin is given by the second life to me and I am RCS, my name Ramesh Sharma, RCS, uh, Darwin, that is my uh, virtual identity in second life. So that way we assume uh, uh, our identities. And 
these things now they are uh, you know a sort of a next generation of media revolution this is a quite important uh, uh, website from where we can uh, you know search uh, the uh, around you see uh, more than 500000 free 3d models which are published under creative commons license so we can use these uh, uh, already created uh, uh, by the community members and use them in our metaverse or virtual reality settings from there the website is named and uh, known as uh, sketchlab.com and there now let us have a look about what kind of software and hardware is needed to create a metaverse so these are the kind of hardware the VR sets which we use from the cheapest one as the Google Cardboard up to the expensive one HTC Vive. And in terms of, uh, uh, okay, I, I'll go uh, with the uh, uh, software next. And these are the things that what kind of interface we are creating. So for auditory, we have 3D sound generation to, to manipulate the sound simulation. For vision, we have HMD. So, which will be uh, taking control of visual simulation. Then for haptic, haptic means we have certain sensors. If you are to operate something, lift some object, click on something, type something on the screen. So for physical simulation, you have trackers, you have sensors, and the kind of natural language uh, processing and LP as the speech recognition, speech synthesis, and speech interpretation from there. And then there are certain other roles also. All these things together, we combined them and then create a platform for uh, there. These have been with us for quite a, uh, a time. Uh, we consider that it was Ivan Sutherland, which created the first uh, in 1968, the headset. And then in the 90s, augmented reality uh, came by Caudel, uh, a Boeing researcher who created this term of uh, virtual reality. And then the from we have shifted from augmented reality to web, and then nowadays even our devices, our mobile phone. I can show you a simple experiment of doing it. How the augmented reality, where we have a virtual layer over a physical layer uh, conducted. After this presentation, we will do a quick uh, uh, experiment of that. So these are some of the developments. I think I will share the presentation so uh, you can uh, go from there. Now, this is how the things they look like to a user who puts these head, head mounted devices uh, as the uh, 2D or 3D. So the difference is that in these things, we have three kinds of situations. Non-immersive, which is normal, non-immersive, then semi-immersive, in which we feel partially immersed and fully immersive, in which there is cave wall, C-A-V-E, which is computer uh, uh, aided, uh, virtual environment, C-A-V-E, -E, K wall. So your whole room will be big, big uh, computer uh, display screens. And then there will be the uh, AI enabled 3D surround sound. So we feel like that, oh, okay, I'm in the ocean surrounded by the marine life altogether, something, those kind of things. And for movement, we need certain sensors which are placed with the uh, hands or a particular uh, part of body from there. And with the help of these controllers, we control the objects. So like here, you see the user is putting injection into the patient. And this is how the system is set up. Uh, you have controllers in your hand, they have mounted device to see the, uh, the immersive experiment, which is connected to the machine and the output uh, can be seen on the monitor for the others to know that what the user is seeing from there. So this is simple one, the uh, Google Cardboard, the improved version of this with which we put our uh, mobile phone. This is by Samsung and it's uh, controller with there. Uh, this is uh, Oculus Quest. This is HTC Vive. Uh, this is uh, again, Sony PlayStation VR. This is by Hollet Packard. Uh, this is Oculus Rift. This is Vive, which is uh, quite advanced. It says that it has a three, six degree of freedom for greater freedom of movement. You know, normally the six degree of freedom is that normally we like X, Y, and Z. There are three planes, X axis, Y axis, and Z axis. 
but then there is in six degree of freedom than the intermixing. So it's like complete in the quantum state. We, we can uh, think of the things in any direction as in the real life. And then six camera sensors, which capture the things from all around. So this is uh, OVO. And this is, then these things they have made, uh, means there are many popular games also about the extended reality in which the user, you know, you have your mobile phone and then with the help of that, there are certain markers hidden into it. And then you, you focus your camera and then it will display that project from there. So a sort of an overlay of the virtual product over a real uh, physical uh, product from there. Uh, this is a basic uh, framework for creating a metaverse, which was suggested by Huang and Chen, that how with the help of uh, decentralized uh, technologies, shared uh, communications, uh, we, with the help of AI-enabled things, they, they create a, con uh, a kind of a virtual uh, life in metaverse uh, from there. To create that, we need these things, a physical world, and then a replication of that as digital twin. Digital twin is a replica of the original one uh, uh, like that, and then uh, creating uh, a metaverse. So this is an example of, uh, which is a virtual replica of an object such that its life cycle, it is complete with the help of user simulations. Uh, then we can you know, uh, observe the behavior of that. So there are certain visual virtual self examples of that which is there. And there are certain uh, uh, websites like uh, readyplayer.me. You can go to this website and can create your own avatar. This is for creating the avatars. Uh, so uh, that, that's interesting. And then this is uh, special.io. So to create an avatar, so you can have assume any anything, just use your own imagination. We will see this website uh, do an experiment with us. So these are the things which are required for uh, the, as a technology backbone. So, uh, so we have an ecosystem, we have one technology and combined together, the metaverse is uh, created with the help of user interactivity, extended reality, computer vision, AI, robotics, et cetera. And then you have avatars, virtual economy, security, acceptability, trust, accountability, all these things, they together, they fit into the framework for metaverse. There are various tools uh, uh, with the, from the simple text-based up to the virtual reality, uh, mixed reality, augmented reality, et cetera. These are some of the uh, tools which you can explore on how, when you, I mean, creating a metaverse or using a metaverse, how it makes them uh, a, a good one. User interactivity is an important concept into it. And that goes with the uh, help of audio or haptics or muscle force feedback, et cetera. With the help of sensors, we, we capture that feedback into there. And then there are on-body interaction techniques. Then you pick up an object in the virtual space and change its position, something you there uh, form. And then this is the vicious interface and interaction. You see in the screen that the user is uh, like picking up a PDF document and putting it into the space. And then you open it, read it from there. There are certain challenges of current metaverse. At present, the kind of technology which we have is that first thing is that the, the HMDs, they are bulky. And then user can feel uncomfortable uncomfort, uh, over a long time. And not only that, uh, wearing them after a certain time, because you, you can't, uh, if you are not accustomed to that, you may feel a little uh, dizziness or something because of uh, constantly, you know, it is covered and you see it there. So at present, as uh, Professor Kasim in his uh, indicating... Can, can. Uh, uh, Rajendra, Rajender, can you mute your microphone, please? Thank you. So uh, uh, there is, uh, uh, you know, the these things. Then, then currently the devices, uh, the kind of graphic capability, it depends much more on that because it's a game. 
means it, it, it's the visual representation which is there. So these things and these are good for as a for research. This has impact on almost all these things. Whatever we can think that in metaverse, everything can has its impact. And then if we see learning and teaching, so if for example, Microsoft Team VR fundamental features, they create 3D realistic avatar using user selfie. I will show you. I have created my user selfie in which my real photograph is there and extended screen to real world. And here our hands are the mouse. So with our hands, we move the objects from there. Like scribble an idea on a word just with the touch of our hand and organize and present our thoughts from there. Uh, not only that, even in, including in, into the music. Uh, so it is meta creation music, M-U-M-E. Uh, then in engineering, robotics, lot of things are there. In fact, it is one of the field where it is more in use because expensive things, dangerous things like that. So uh, 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 better suited for those situations. There are certain drivers for that. Rise of the uh, uh, streaming means nowadays, you know, bandwidth has increased. Then rise in the online social multiplayer platforms, uh, the gaming industry, decentralized uh, platforms, uh, 5G is coming, visualization of software, uh, those, those things they have. So all these are the drivers behind the metaverse. That's why Facebook thought that, oh, okay, things are here and let's move from there. So what will be the norm for the next generation education? We will be focusing more on UX and UI. UX stands for user experience. UI stands for user interface. Both these things. User interface is that how easily you can use an application. And experience means how comfortable, how satisfied I am with a particular uh, application. And then the content. Content nowadays, it is powered by AI. So we have no coding tools, no programming is required from there. And the, the AI is generating content. There are already some softwares. You know, Grammarly is already there, which is AI powered. It helps us in, in maintaining the good grammar for our text and something. So there are many other uh, 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 there. Then platforms, they are supporting it. Metaverse as a platform, the delivery model has been there. And then the mixed reality cloud native applications are supported with the help of uh, uh, hardwares. So there is an increasing amount. Initially, it was more of gaming, but nowadays, known gaming activities, they are happening around us, like graduation ceremony. For the past two years, due to lockdown, uh, due to COVID all around the world, no physical class was being had. And many institutions, they had their graduation ceremonies in the cloud, in the metaverse like that. So those things. You have artificial intelligence assisted user generated content. We have improving the augmented reality glasses, the lenses, which, which, which shows us those things. Like uh, once upon a time, there was a Google Glass and then it came and disappeared. Now the another version of Google Glass uh, has come up. So we have digital persistent digital identities. We have dynamic AI avatars. We have rapid auto generation of maps, worlds, because if you teleport, it has to be created immediately into the open world. So it is real-time creation, real-time simulation or visualization because the digital human beings, they need to look like hyper-realistic, adapting to real-time situations are from there. So uh, what is this coming up? An example of metaverse in health sciences. So you see the brain, and you can separate the brain components, and you see what you want to touch, if you want to build something, you want to operate something, you want to cut a particular section. So you take it to something, and so it's brain. So that goes. Then let us see that how we can create metaverse experiences. And this is uh, special. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, log into that. I will show it to you. You can note down this website. Do you recognize? I hope everyone knows about it. I created it uh, during daytime. A page for actually, uh, there was no time for me to create a 3D. Uh, platform for that. So I just took the gate 
and then this is me in the center of entering the gate of the Anadolu University. This is in uh, Metaverse uh, uh, from there. And then there is uh, another website. Uh, this is Roblox, where you can create your own uh, Metaverse, R-O-B-L-O-X, Roblox.com. This is uh, another uh, website. And then uh, this is uh, Decentraland, which we showed it to you. And then this one is MetaHero, M-E-T-A-H-E-R-O, MetaHero, gaming, fashion, medicine, NFT, social media, AR, VR, that is a big use by them. Okay. And then uh, we have this metaverse software, we, uh, which can be used for there. So let me uh, uh, change my screen and show to you the, okay, I think, uh, okay, let me do it this way. So here. Okay. So there is your screen. This one is there. Share. So this is the website. If someone of you, Dr. Serap or Dr. Serpil, uh, if you can go to this website, special.io, and create your ID into it, just log in. It's a free login. And then we can meet into the metaverse. So I have already my uh, uh, login. So I'm logging in. So it is asking that how you want to log in using your Google or Apple or Microsoft or using your email. So I will use my email. It is asking me. So this is RCS. Sorry. And then password. So this is here, uh, you know, the places which we can visit and we can create. If someone can log in, then please let me know. I'll share my location and we can meet from there. And then we can create our own spaces also. Like these are the spaces. Let me see uh, which one I created. I think, yes, this one I created during daytime. That is my name, Bajrangbali, which is a popular name for Lord Hanuman, the elephant god, uh, not elephant god, but the monkey god there. And it is uh, just loading in. So what we need is we need to uh, create a 3D. So what I did, I went to the web, took a photograph of the uh, gate of the university as JPG, converted that JPG into a uh, 3D model and then uh, from that 3D model I uh, put uh, it into the metaverse from there so okay this is just a minute so okay here it is and I'll, I'll be so this is me appearing and walking in the metaverse. And you can see, you can move a around anyway. And if you see, okay. <laughs> because it is converted JPG uh, into 3D. So that's why you see it like this. So here, this is me standing. I can move my avatar from any place. 
and uh, means uh, when I have more time, you can create a you can uh, create a, a 3D model of our university and can make the people walk uh, around it. So this is uh, one platform. It is special.io. Many things can be done. And okay, it is here to share. This is the share uh, the location. So I copy it. And where is the chat? Here is the chat. And if when you click on it, if you have your ID, you can come and meet me at the gate of Anadolu University. That's that's as simple as that. Uh, okay. Uh, here it is. So this is connecting to voice channel. Uh, yes, I can see. <laughs> Very good. Uh, let us see. You are here. You can change your avatar. Oh, one more friend is here. And we can talk using this uh, microphone here. It will uh, allow. Okay. And here you, we can turn on our camera like that. And we can, uh, you know, talk. And by clicking on this icon in the right, we can change our look. So this is me. You can see uh, it took my photograph of the face and added other things. So from here, I can customize my avatar and save it from there. So yay, party time. So you see here, we have uh, good friends. Yes, wonderful. Okay, and then, uh, uh, yes. So this is just elementary, means we, we have not created more rooms there, otherwise uh, we can do. There is another uh, uh, interesting application, it is called as Metaverse. So let me share this URL with you, where is the chat? Uh, here you can create your ID into it and let me just give a demo uh, to show it to you. You can register for it and it's simple registration means uh, and then your author name. So And let me see, I can log in. So this is another platform. And you see it has, it will now create certain uh, uh, layers, then so creating objects from different, it is loading the location. So this is my location. into it on this one. Oh, what happened? Let me close that one because oh wow somebody was creating a CMO.
So now it is loading textures. It will take some time. And uh, because now the memory of my system is being used. So uh, it's uh, a little bit, uh, okay. This is also free application. You can uh, uh, create, okay. So the, now it is loading geometry. So the chat has been enabled and uh, this is me, my avatar and here, yes, you can see, where are you Dr. Sarah? And talk. Actually, I need to put my phone. So, in this also, you can make the your avatar go from places to places. And these are the options to change the uh, means the customize your avatar, and then uh, you can make them move. You can make it run and uh, you know can carry out the uh, you can share your location there are certain tools available and then uh, yes so let us see i am being teleported so it is loading the location So I'm going to a new place now. So here I am with a friend. So we can talk. So you see, you can invite your students, your friends, your colleagues, and take them to a particular place which you have created from there. So this time, let us see where I'm going. And here, you see, you can walk. So, here is our friend, perhaps, wow. There are drinks for us to enjoy. And here is a screen which we can see what is IG, something is going on on the television. So you can, wait. now I was telling you that, so you see here it is full body animation. So. Here comes our friend, another avatar, you see, a yes, good. So this is how, you know, you are able to create your avatar and meet people online from there. So, okay, I think the time is up now and let me, uh, where is stop sharing? Yes. So over to you, Professor Kasim. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Sharma, uh, for valuable contribution. Uh, now, uh, I would like to ask uh, for audience, uh, are there any question uh, about this presentation to Mr. Sharma? Hello, Aras. <laughs> Good to see you. Okay. Hello, Ramesh. Hello, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Aras.
yeah we need uh, uh, a little uh, uh, for this these applications these tools to use the internet bandwidth is one of the big issue means it won't uh, uh, be smooth on slow networks and that's why people are expecting that uh, in india also the uh, the uh, means the initiatives are going on to put 5g in place already uh, in fact in our metro cities we have good at present uh, i'm here and uh, we have uh, i think uh, five other computers connected to our network with one oled television and still you see i was able to uh, project my screen and work in uh, uh, metaverse so we have good bandwidth there so, mr sharma there is a question from sapu kushta are there any open university campuses in these environments uh, i hope that anadolu university will be the first one i just created that page so <laughs> but not others as of now uh, uk ou they have done some initial work initially uh, to iet it's a uh, institute of but otherwise uh, no other university at present so that way okay uh, do you read uh, aras bors kurt uh, i mean uh, uh, yes uh, uh, i wonder if metaverse is a hype as it be case of second life or it is another chapter with new promises uh, i believe that uh, at present uh, something like uh, when the second life came lot of uh, excitement was there but then people didn't pay any attention it went into oblivion and but the company revived similarly the same fate happened with the uh, google glass uh, it came and then disappeared and the second installment came so something like that i believe that uh, at present it is more of a high because everybody in fact the new kind of designations they have come if you see on linkedin many people now it is they are uh, chief metaverse officer cmo and those kind of things they are uh, coming up but uh, i believe that if the uh, good networks they uh, come up then there will be few things like uh, the uh, the kind of ott the over the top uh, the the kind of content sharing that will become it will be easy for the teachers uh, uh, you know to to share their knowledge to interact with people and particularly when it is more of internationalization of education when we can't move depending on that in that case then i believe that certainly there are promises uh, how those will be fulfilled it depends a lot on the kind of uh, uh, technology if the open hardware systems like uh, raspberry pi and other things and open source softwares at present uh, there are very few uh, means most of them they are commercial and it creates a inhibi means a, a challenge uh, uh, for uh, those things so that way when things become more uh, available then definitely to me that it holds on it holds a good promise oh, okay uh, are there any question also more question okay uh, mr sharma uh, as my opinion uh, there is uh, not i mean that uh, suitable or considerable infrastructure or metaverse at the moment all over the world uh, only there are some studying and uh, some projects and so on uh, as i know uh, metaverse is an umbrella concept uh, is built on six pillars as you know uh, 5g or 6g communication system web 3.0 cloud computing artificial intelligence blockchain and extended reality uh, these uh, six pillars uh, we, we never see all of them i mean uh, whole pillars uh, i mean uh, re reasonable you know that one or two or three uh, pillars uh, and mostly uh, web 30 applications and blockchain applications could be widespread in this area uh what's your opinion about my uh, uh contribution uh 
I agree th that, uh, but uh, some of the things they will be, uh, you know, work is going on on them. Like in uh, in, in various countries, the uh, 5G is already there and uh, means they have started using. So that way it will be taken care of. The issue is with the kind of uh, uh, hardware which is needed for that. And uh, uh, like HMD, the good kind of uh, devices, they are expensive at present. The educational, uh, and if you use Google Cardboard, which is, but that will give you semi immersive experience. So it won't, and in that case, it more becomes a game kind of a activity, not as real educational activity, because we are not able to achieve our goal to the fullest extent into it. Uh, so uh, I agree. But the kind of technology is progressing in that uh, blockchain uh, is uh, implemented even various governments in India. Many of the government of India projects, they are already uh, supported using that land records, the other kind of documentations and uh, the business houses, they are accepting it. So those, those the decentralized technology, it is being implemented. So out of these pillars, the work on some of them is already underway. Some needs to be focused upon. So unless it is there, there will be imbalance. Until that imbalance is there, we won't be able to see good. Uh, and particularly at present, since it is a nascent area, new area, not much research has uh, been done into it. So many of the uh, uh, people, they are just in a situation of wait and, uh, wait and watch as well. Because to do research, you, we, we need the environment. For the, for the environment, the finance becomes an issue. Okay. Uh, dear audience, are there any questions also? Okay, Mr. Sharma, uh, thank you very much for your kind uh, consideration. But I would like to uh, remind uh, uh, Mark Zuckerberg's uh, explanation also. Uh, this Zuckerberg's note that new platform will be more immersive, that people will not only look at it, but will be tangible, tangible internet in this experience also. He talked about uh, Spark AR uh, curriculum program. Uh, also, as, as I know, uh, Zuckerberg has a uh, connection with Coursera and NX, edX. Okay, thank you very much for kind uh, consideration. We hope that next time we will be uh, with you face-to-face -face, uh, presentation. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you, my friends. It, it is always a pleasure to uh, talk to all of you and have a nice evening ahead. Okay. Take care, bye-bye. Thank you. Uh... Thanks to Dr. Sharma. Thank you. Okay. This Thank is certificate. It's so beautiful. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much for all the, all, all the audience. Uh, okay. Uh, Thank you. See you next time. Okay. Bye-bye.